I'm this man's pastor that's coming, and I want him to treat me good, so I'm not going to take his space. Amen. But God has blessed us with a miracle. A miracle is going to come and preach to you tonight. He's going to speak to your heart. Amen. Let, let me say, the only way that the Word of God can speak to your heart is that you open it and say, Here am I, Lord. Let me hide that Word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Hallelujah. We have come in, amen, before you a great man of God that is no stranger to the Church of God Mountain Assembly. Reverend Tim McGlone began his ministry at the Goshen, Ohio Church of God in 1977 under the great, late Earl McKinney. He became licensed in 1980 and assumed the pastorate of High Point. He was ordained two years later after 10 years there and building a new building. Amen there. He served the Goshen Church as a promotional director, worked as a chaplain for Ford Motor Company, and served as senior pastor at the great Goshen Church. Brother Tim holds a degree in business administration, and he and his wife, Debbie, our parents of one son, Nathaniel. This week, Reverend McClone concludes a, a term on the board of elders, the 12 elders. Could you stand and welcome Reverend Tim McClone to present the word? Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, I enjoyed that singing. That was so wonderful. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you sure are looking good. <laughs> Nothing like the power of confession. It will change things in a moment. Let me uh, give thanks to a few people here tonight before I uh, get into the Word of God. First of all, I count it an honor and a privilege uh, just to even be able to be here. Uh, God has blessed me with enough strength uh, to be able to get here uh, to preach his word. I'm thankful for the message that he's given me. I'm looking forward to see what God prophetically is going to do in these last days. Eschatology has been a big part of my ministry, which means I preach a lot on the end of times. In the book of Acts, the end of times was listed as being in that day. But we're living in the end of the end of times. Jesus is getting ready to come back. I thank the Lord for all the wonderful singers and appreciate their help. I thank God for the executive board. I honor them. I appreciate their time, their abilities, and their willingness. Appreciate the Board of Elders, which I served on. They're great people. They love God. They're not here to make laws, but they're here to interpret and to be sure that we operate according to what we have given to all of you. And so we thank God for them. Thank God for the program committee that somebody made an accident and asked them to put me uh, on the list this year. But I'm very thankful to all of those. I thank God for my wife, Debbie. Uh, I love her. If it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't even be here tonight. Uh, but she has been my nurse, my helper uh, through the last four years. And I appreciate her this evening. And I thank God for all of you. Without you, we wouldn't have a church. But because of you, we have one. And I thank God for that. And for all of you that are watching by YouTube or Facebook or whatever it might be, maybe the CGMA uh, page, but we appreciate all of you tonight. We hope and pray that God may lay it within your spirit to find Christ if you don't know him. 
and also to be here to worship with us as we look into God's Word. I'm going to ask you tonight, if you would, to stand with me all over the building. We're going to pray. It does no good for a man to get up with enticing words of man's wisdom, but we need the Holy Ghost and the power and the anointing of God. Now listen to me. Don't believe anything that you hear. And only half of what you see, and you'll just barely stay safe. That's what kind of time we're living in. But as long as you hold up that blood standard of Jesus Christ, he is going to bring victory in the spirit to you. He will touch all of those of you that are around you, and he will let them know of a truth who you are. Your spirit will bear witness that you are a child of God. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to be here. I love you, Lord. I praise you, God. I thank you that I'm going to have this opportunity to once again preach your word. Lord, I pray tonight that you'll help me. See, I need, I need divine strength, God, to be able to do this. And I know that you're able to give it to me, Father, and I'm believing in that right now tonight. Bless these people. God, that something will speak to their hearts that will encourage them, that they will be full of joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. What a place to be. God, we give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name because your anointing is supreme. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap for praise. God. So I'm going to meddle. I'm an old man. The doctors tell me I'm dying, so I might as well let her go. Praise God, I got nothing to lose, but I got a lot to gain with him. I'm going to be in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, which is our theme and our text, and I appreciate it so much. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Everybody say, fully come. come. So about ten days after they got there, something was about to go down in the upper room. (laughs) The Bible says they were all with one accord in one place. You can stand for the reading of the word. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled half of the house where they were sitting. All of the house. See, the unity part of this text is more than just believing and agreeing on the same things. We need to have a unified shout for the glory of God. We need to have a unified purpose that we're going to destroy the works and the power of the enemy. God was about to anoint the church with the power to see this happen. Devils were about to start trembling. People who didn't know Jesus of 3,000 and 5,000 were about to find out about the Messiah that come to take away the sins of the world. And the message would be given through the tongues of the Holy Ghost that would speak to the hearts of the people. The Bible says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, I'm being filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. See, religion's not going to get you there. It's not going to anoint you now till you come through the atonement of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, And when it was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and the Bible says that they were confounded. Because that every man heard them speak in his own language. 
Give the Lord a hand clap for the reading of the word. Praise God. The Bible teaches us that in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, you are the salt of the earth. That's you. The Bible says, but if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. He goes on, you are the light of the world, the Bible says. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it underneath a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Mm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Ignite, unite. Be the light. Man, what a heavy duty theme. And for a preacher like me, it could be ours. But since I won't be able to make it that long, you've got, you got a short time to go. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Jesus had been crucified on the day of Pentecost, and we are definitely living in perilous times. These new Christians were living in perilous times. You see, just previous to this action of the Godhead, we find that the church has been underneath persecution and their Messiah has been dragged through the streets and he's been whipped and he's been mocked and he had a crown of thorns placed upon his head and he was strung up on a cross and fell and another man helped him to get it to rest the way up to Calvary's hill. But when he got up there, the world would never ever be the same. When he got up there, the church will never, ever be the same. Because when he got to that point, he was about to be the Messiah that gave his life for the sins of the world to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fill us with holiness and sanctification in the Spirit of God. You're never going to change till God's Spirit comes in you uh, and hollows out the sin in your life uh, and cleanses you. Uh, I'm glad I'm clean tonight. Uh, I'm glad that the devil has no hold upon me. Uh, I'm glad that Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith and though I might live in perilous times I serve a God that has crushed them in the name of Jesus he's just waiting for us to step out on the sunny banks of sweet deliverance and claim what thus saith the word of the Lord can you say amen give Jesus a hand clap of praise I have never seen such times as we're living in right now. God help us in these last days and perilous times. Yes, they are exactly what God's Word said they would be. Amen. They are heady, high-minded. They think they're something else. They're lovers of them own selves. They don't need you. They love themselves enough. They're boasters. They're proud. The worst thing of all is they're blasphemers. They're disobedient to parents. They're unthankful. Boy, I'm talking about today. They are unholy. I've never seen a time when the holiness of God is being challenged like it is today. And the thing that really hurts my soul is that it isn't just only the people that are in the world. 
But there are a lot of people in church houses all over the United States of America that doesn't understand what the word holy even means. And they don't understand that you can't make yourself holy. Only Jesus can sanctify you and set you free. I'm going to tell you something. We need a Holy Ghost revival to ignite the church of the living God. To hold up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. And declare there is a may that may seemeth to be right unto man. But the end thereof will be destruction. But if we trust and believe in God, God's going to put our enemies underneath our feet. There'll be no mountain too high. There'll be no valley too low. That my God won't be able to bring them level and let us walk on the straight and narrow. In the name of Jesus, can you say amen? Turn around and tell somebody he's about to preach. Speak to us, Father. Help us to know that it's not by might. It's not by power. It's not about a government. It's not about politics. It's about spiritual wickedness in high places that's trying to destroy the body of Jesus Christ. But there's a blood-bought church without spot and without blemish that will raise up the name of Jesus and declare glory in His name. Can you say amen? I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a Republican or a Libertarian or what you are. Are you a Christian? We're worried about who's on what side. I'm on Jesus' side. And whoever's holding up that standard, that's who I'm going to be with. Oh, Uh, Just a minute because I'm just getting started into this part these new Christians had come through the commandment of the Lord to a place that we call and the word dignifies it by saying it's true the upper room underneath his commission when they got there can you imagine what it was like to stay in one mind and one accord for 10 days we can't do it for 45 minutes We're too worried about what somebody else is doing. We're too worried about how some... You know what? If we spend as much time worrying about how to live our own lives holy... Then we'd be a light. We'd be salt. And the salt would have its savior. And whenever you begin to do what you know is right, don't worry about somebody else. Get yourself saved. Get yourself sanctified. Get yourself filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Become a worshiper. Become a shouter. Become a holy roller. Uh, Become somebody that's separated and meet uh, for the master's use. uh, And God will take you uh, to the portals uh, of glory. Can you say amen? The church. I'm telling you, this message came from God. The church of the United States of America, I'm preaching to our country, the greatest country in the world. I said, the greatest country in the world. There's none that can even parallel us much less exceed us. But we're running into a period of time to where the atmosphere is changing and the fragmentation of the body of Christ is greater than it's ever been. Who's right, preacher? He's right. And if he says it, it's right. And it doesn't make any difference what anybody else thinks. 
If God's word said it, it's true and amen. And nobody can take it out of the heart of a soul that has given themselves to Jesus. So what are you saying? The church is not going forward. It's falling backward. The church of God of the Mountain Assembly may be going forward, but the church world as a whole is not. And there's more fragmentation than ever. I don't believe in speaking in tongues. The Word of God said they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. What are you saying? I'm saying we're blessed that we're on the right side of the cross. Hallelujah. Where Jesus has forgiven us and set us free. I don't want to be proud like the other man on the other side of the cross. I don't want to be heady. I don't want to be high-minded. I want to have a humble spirit that says, God, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And when Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me, in paradise the body of Christ was born on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost and fire began to reign in the church it still reigns today for those that will let it go there's no height too high that God can't reach there's no doctrine so deep that God's not true God is true every man's a liar and I say today let's be who we are Woo. Inflation's at a 40 year high. Perilous times. We're selling oil to foreign countries, millions of gallons, even to China. Man, I'll tell you. Abortions, there's over a million a year in the United States of America. A million. Do we not realize that that's the shedding of innocent blood? There's doctrines out there to tell you it's fine. What are you trying to do, preacher? I'm trying to tell you, let's be who we are. And don't worry about who they are. There's a lot of them out there going to church every Sunday that need to get saved. There's a lot of them that go to church every Sunday and never even hear a message of salvation. And we have the entire Word of God preached to us uh, every weekend in our churches uh, in this great country. Uh, I've come to bless God for who we are. i come to bless God that we've been shown the light. Uh, I've come to bless God that we've been filled with the Savior of the salt. Uh, amen. And we have become that uh, to a sin sick and a dying world. Uh, I say let's hold fast. Uh, don't turn to the left. Uh, don't turn to the right. Uh, even though the perilous times are here. Great are. I said, Great are is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Let the saints of God rejoice and let the devils tremble. If religion fails, then let her fall. But let the truth of God arise in the hearts and the souls of the believers in Jesus. Can you say amen? Ten people died in a supermarket, shot. But it wasn't the gun that killed them. There was somebody with their finger on the trigger that killed those dear people. Nineteen children died while they listened to the screams and hollers. Whoa. You want to know something that backed me up a minute when I was watching it on TV? It was that. When I heard those kids screaming and I could hear that AR pumping them and I know that there's a man standing there that his child is in that classroom. I'd have took every one of them out 
And I'd have went in there and got that guy and stopped him from killing those kids. That's what the church is for. We're to stop them from killing the innocent. We're to stand for the right of God. You don't need an abortion. You need to have that child. If you got to put it up for adoption, do it. But do the right thing. If we keep shedding innocent blood, the power of God is going to fall on this country and we haven't even seen a perilous time if we get underneath the hand of the judgment of the Lord. But if we'll stand for what's right and do what's right and walk that way, uh, God will take us to the end. Tell somebody he's about to preach. Nineteen children, yeah, nineteen children and two adults died that day. While fourteen people stood aside. Adjusted the thermostat on the wall. Now these things just absolutely, I couldn't begin to imagine. I tell you what, I'm a preacher of the gospel. If I'd have been there and my son would have been in that room, don't you never think for one minute. I was too much of a scrapper when I was a kid. I know how to fight. I know how to win. And I'm here to tell you today, I'd have been in that room and I'd have had him by the neck if I didn't have nothing to shoot him with. I'd have choked him to death because he didn't have no business. See, what we need for the church today is to not just ignite, but we need to unite and walk in one mind and in one accord, serving one God, one Lord, one Savior, and one God that's above all and through all and in you all tonight. No, sir. It wouldn't have happened. Parents are being asked not to make decisions in their own children's education. They can't even make up a definition of a woman. How many women we got in here tonight? Would you stay in with me? Aren't you glad you know who you are? Praise God, aren't you glad you know who you are? They can't tell you you're something different because you know who you are and you know who you trust and believe and you're going to serve Him no matter what anybody says. Turn around and tell somebody you got to like Him. Kids today are being told they can be a cat. Perilous times. I'd tell you what I used to do with cats, but it'd probably get me in trouble. You're not a cat. You're not a dog. And these school boards have got to come down. They might be heady and high-minded. They might be well-educated, but they're ignorant. They're ignorant of the truth that can set you free. Let me tell you something. If my kid was going to public school today, I'd probably already be in trouble. They aren't going to tell my kid that he's not a male or he's not a female or that he's a cat or that he's a dog. They're not going to tell my kid that a drag queen is in their class uh, reading books to them. I uh-uh, no. That isn't a place for those things. What happened to reading, math, and all of the different things, English, uh, that you need to make it in this world? You don't need to be deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, uh, that shall he also reap. Can somebody say praise God? We need to ignite the Holy Ghost, the convictor, uh, the one that can bring us down uh, to where we need to be, uh, that one that says uh, you're not dependent on anybody else you're dependent on me that's what Jesus says walk this way and see God we're in a border crisis it's bringing more 
illegals into this country. I don't have any problem. Let me tell you something. I was an advisor for Ford Motor Company for 10 years. And I served on their chaplaincy committee, which meant that in the zone, I run the west side of the plant. In the zone that I was in, if somebody had a marriage problem, somebody needed to get married, somebody needed to get buried, they would come and see us, and we would do our best to take care of the needs that they had. If they were alcoholics, if they were drug addicts, they would come to see us, and Ford said it was all right. We, well, I was, anyhow. I was taught diversity through that company that no people in this world should ever have to go through. There wasn't one single rock unturned that they didn't teach us about diversity. But you guys know I'm about to step on a rock now, right? Listen to me. But whenever they came to Ford and they got hired on, there was every kind of person in the world in that plant. But when it come time to work, everything was done by the FPS system, no matter what creed, no matter what culture. You didn't do it because, different because of your culture. You didn't do it different because of your creed. You done it by the Ford production system, the FPS system, and everybody became united and underneath that one flag of Ford that said, yes, we appreciate your diversity, but when you're here, you're going to do it Ford's way. And I'm here to tell you today, God says to the people that are fragmented in this world, you better get in. The fire's about to fly. The devils are about to shake. The cultures are about to change. But when you come into Jesus Christ, you can't drag your culture in. You can't drag your differences of a boss. Somebody help me preach. I'm just about there now. Praise God, you can't do it. You gotta come through the blood. You gotta believe in Jesus Christ. You gotta believe in the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ. You've got to believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Amen. Say amen. amen. Nine point one percent on inflation. Now, I'm a numbers man, always have been, always will be. Numbers will never lie as long as you have good information. 9.1% folks is a scary number. The last thing I could find on that was over 40 years ago. That's scary, scary ground. We're not about to enter into a recession. We are there. Now the LPGQ can come in or you alphabet people, whatever you want to call them. They can come in. The homosexuals can come in. See how it's like when you get old, it gets fun. <laughs> they can only kill you once, right? That's, that's about all they can do. And I'm here to tell you today, I don't have a problem with them coming. When I was at Goshen, that church grew. A hundred people a year was saved, and it grew and grew and grew till it was unbelievable. High Point was over 200 people, and people were rolling out windows and standing outside just to be able to hear. It had nothing to do with me. It was because the anointing of the Holy Ghost stirred the people and filled the house. Even the ones that were sitting was blessed. That's what it says in here. I'm a big World War II buff. Study a lot of basic Army, Navy, Marine. When, when you study how they are, they have a, a battle buddy. Some of you that's been in the service may know what I'm talking about. 
Now, your battle buddy, if you're in the Air Force, he's your wingman. But whatever the situation is, you got one. And you guys are flying parallel. You're there to see to each other. Can I, can I preach? You didn't know you are looking at a dead man walking. And a dead man preaching. By everything that they say. But I refuse to believe the report. I understand what war is, brother. And I've been in it. And I've gotten tired. But there's always a battle buddy. That'll text me on that phone. Say, look up, preacher. Things are about to change. There's a paradigm shift that's coming. The signs that are following the believers will appear. Jesus is coming back for his people. But before he comes back for his people, he's coming to a sin sick and a dying world through the church. My cousin was six foot eight, 320 pounds. He was a big boy. I felt good when I was with him. I folded him up and put him in an MG midget one night. And it looked like Fred Flintstone's head hanging above the window. I fought with that boy so many times, not him, but him with me, out in the world that we were battle buddies. Now here's the way it goes. Whenever you're in training, they train you a drill to do something a certain way. And you do it. God forbid if you don't. You do it. Your battle buddy does it. The rest of those guys down that line do it. And do it. And do it. And do it. And when you get under fire and you lose your focus, you do it automatic. You don't need nobody to tell you. You know what to do. And you do it no matter what's out there coming against you. Well, I'm here to tell you I'm glad I've got some battle buddies uh, in the church of God of the Mountain Assembly and they have stood for me uh, and they have prayed for me uh, and they have believed for me uh, and they have the same weapons of warfare that I have. Uh, they've got a helmet of salvation. Uh, they got a sword of the Spirit. Uh, they got a breastplate of righteousness. Uh, they're armed. Uh, they're ready. Uh, their feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. Uh, I'm here to tell you today uh, we're in a war uh, and the devil's trying his best to kill us uh, but Jesus said if I'm for you he said if I'm for you who in the world can be against you I'm here to preach to you tonight uh, that no matter what the devil brings God's greater uh, no matter what he tries uh, God's smarter uh, he's got it all in hand uh, I'm believing for my miracle uh, my guts may be outside hanging in a bag tonight uh, but I've got news to bring. God can put them back in. God can heal the cancer. God can set me free. And I believe I've got people in this church that believe it right along with me. Can you say amen? Okay. I got to figure out how to get back up here. There we go. I made it. You made it. Praise God. Great, great, great. Five, well, four and a half years ago, they told me I had cancer. Joe, you come up here and you hugged me last night. Somehow or another, your wife got a shot of it. She sent it to my room. Yes, sir, buddy. I'm with you, and I know you're with me. We're going to fight till we win. I 
I beat cancer twice. They cleaned me up two times. It came back. Third time's a charm. I told that doctor when I went to him for my 14th round of chemo, which is like getting hit in the head with a board. And he told me that I probably wouldn't be able to make it down here because I wouldn't have the strength and I probably wouldn't be able to walk. When I got up that Friday morning to go see him, I said, Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to release your hold upon me. My wife prayed for me every night. God, take the root of this cancer out of his body. Let the therapy do its work, but don't harm the good organs. My heart stopped. And they got it going again. I died just about on the table after 12 hours of surgery in one week where they cut me in two. I've got holes shot in me that's as big as a 357 Magnum. I got a tumor in my hip right now that's trying to disable my right leg. But when I got up that Friday and I rebuked the devil, I walked out in my garage and this may sound funny, but I looked over there. Now, I've rode a Harley Davidson since 1968. I was born on one. I looked over there and I seen that Harley Davidson sitting there. And I walked over to it. I throwed my leg over top of that seat. And I said, Here we go. And I backed that thing out and I started it up. 968 pounds is what mine weighs. And I took off and I rode that thing to the hospital. And when I went in there, they was wondering, did you walk in here? I didn't have the heart to tell him that I rode my Harley over there. <laughs> and I planned on riding it back home. He would have said, you're a fool. I'm a believer. It's not by my might nor my power, Nick. It's not by anything I can do but to believe. To believe. The United States of America is in trouble. It's a sin problem. Leadership, mount up. Start preaching against sin. Start preaching that there is holiness. There's a highway with its name on it called the highway of holiness. Sanctification, sancti is a separation from. Vacation is a dedication to. And when you get sanctified, things change because not only are you separated from, now you're dedicated to. And there's new blood in your body. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. So we ignite because we need a refreshing of the Holy Ghost. We unite because it's the only way we can bring down the powers of the enemy. And we become the light and get rid of all these doctrines of devils. Quit trying to see how close we can get in instead of how far we can set apart and say this is the way God. It's not a hard thing, but the devil seems to make it that way. I love you. The Church of God of the Mountain Assembly has given me 
everything that I've got. I went to college. I got my degree. I worked for a Fortune 500 company. I worked for 30 years in full-time ministry. And I once was young, but now I'm old. I'm not a Joshua no more. I'm here to help, to uplift, to instruct in the things that I know. And I know one thing, Jay. If the enemy comes from the right, you and I both are going to turn that same direction together. Because you're my brother. And we don't let each other down. In 1977, I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. I lived in a drug house. My wife, before I married her, I took her there one time. And she went in that place, and lo and behold, she couldn't believe what she saw. But here's what happened to me. A preacher preached on hell so hot that I could feel it burning the bottom of my feet. Where is the message of hell anymore? Hell is just as real as heaven is. The devil is just as real as Jesus Christ was. I didn't need to tell somebody me to tell somebody to tell me that I couldn't change. The doctors had told me that. I'd been through rehab three times. Nobody could help me. They said you're just going to waller to death and beat up inside, which I already was at a young age. But that preacher come back to me. One legged man, last name Stacy, come back to me and look me in the face. Of course I had hair down to my belt and a beard to my belly button. Earrings in my ears, spoon rings on every finger, sharp and sharp enough to shave your beard off. So you can imagine what it was like to get hit with one of them. Ready for battle. I wore wristbands full of nothing but spikes, a dog collar full of nothing but spikes, a belt made out of razor wire and a piece of wood. It didn't make any difference where you grabbed this chihuahua you were going to get hurt. My boots had tips sewn into the toes, plates on the heels. First blood. If you're going to fight, you want to draw it first. If you do, you'll scare the life out of most of them. And they'll leave you alone. Now, here, and I'm ending. Don't wait till the enemy comes to you. I know what the power of deliverance is, and I've experienced it when God could take a shaken body and make it still in a matter of seconds. I know what it is to go back to the doctor and him run that stuff through me again and say, we don't see no ulcers anymore because God has healed you. I know what that is. I know what it is to hear the word cancer. I know what it's like to run into a wall at 100 miles an hour when they tell you something like that and your mind goes crazy and you're wondering what the next five years is going to hold. But I'm here to tell you that I settle in the promise that he holds it all in the palm of his hand and he holds the church in the palm of his hand come here Debbie come here she's just as pretty today as she was 40, 45 years ago had to think on that for a minute chemo fog I can believe it on that Come here, honey. No, I know. I, I won't ask you to do that, and I'm not coming down there, but we're going to stand here together. If it hadn't been for Debbie McKinney coming into my life, I'd have never made it through the bad times. Because of all of the battle buddies that I've had, I've never had one like her. I mean, she cleans me up. 
I'm here tonight looking like I'm looking because of her. She was the one that got this polka dot tie, not me. <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference what size you are. If you've got a good battle buddy, you're going to make it through. And the Church of God of Mountain Assembly gave me everything that I've got. I got delivered. I got set free. God gave me a beautiful wife and blessed me with a faithful woman. And she has stood by me through the thick and the thin. I'm not looking for her to bury me in a box in the next three to six months. I'm looking on being here when we hit 70 years old. Glory! I said I'll be here. Hallelujah! Glory! They gave me church as the pastor. They gave me a good doctrine to live on. I've made it. If I don't see you anymore here, I will see you on the sunny banks of sweet deliverance. Everybody says they're going into the eastern gates. They wrote songs about it. But I told everybody, and I've preached many funerals, and I said, look, when you get there, you come to the western gate. I'm going to be there. I may not be able to see you at that eastern gate with all those people, but if you come over to the western side, I'm going to be able to put my eye on you. And we're going to have a time shouting on the sunny banks of sweet deliverance. I'm believing what God said that he healed us. Not healing, healed us. I'm trying to find my way to step in it. And I need you to fight with me. You've been trained and you know it's time to react. It's time to grab this nation. It's time for our young people to get involved in the politics of this world. We need godly senators. Godly congresswomen, godly congressmen. We need godly presidents. We need godly school teachers. We need godly board members. And if we keep telling them not to get involved, we're just pushing the world forward. We can't stop them till we go get them. So I'm saying to you today, young people, Get involved. Get trained. Do what you know is right no matter what position you stand in. And you won't believe where God will take you to. He took me out of living in a van. Now I've got three homes, three cars, three motorcycles, and one wife. <laughs> Notice how cleverly I got that one. Chemo hadn't took me over all the way. I love you guys. Will you please continue to remember me in prayer? Yes, amen. If you call me and ask me to come and preach, I'm just evangelizing. But if you call and ask me to come and preach tonight, I'll do my best to get there. But I need for you to pray that God brings deliverance. The problem with me is I get tired of playing around. And I get tired of being frustrated. And so I react. I'm ready to react. I'm ready to take him on his own ground. And I'm ready in the name of Jesus to have the archangel step up and say it's over. He's fought long enough. Don't you ever think he can't do it. In the moment, as ambassadors, he's coming back in the twinkling of an eye. He can do it. How many of you want to have a resurrection igniting power of the Holy Ghost? Tommy used to sing, you got to move. 
you got to move. The church has got to move. We got to get out of the seats and we got to get out of the pews and we got to walk and talk in the name of Jesus. Uh, is the ladies coming back up to sing for us? Praise God. Now listen to me. It's not a might or a maybe. This song that they're getting ready to sing says you must have the power and the Holy Ghost. Prayer wheels turning that'll keep the fires burning. You see, it's a kind of deliverance that the world can't have and the world can't take it away. May God bless you in your journey. I love you and I appreciate you. Thank you for bearing with me. This is the longest I've ever preached in my life and the sickest I've ever been. Ladies, will you sing that for me? Praise God. Aren't they good? I love them and appreciate them. Come on. Let me tell you about the comforter Bible said would lead you on. Jesus said Made the lake to 